Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be learning about refraction. Let's begin with a quick introduction. Refraction of light is a natural phenomenon whereby light waves change direction as they pass from one medium to another. In the human eye, there are four refractive media, the cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens, and the vitreous humor. The normal size, shape, and curvature of these media are critical factors in achieving clear vision by properly focusing images onto the retina. The anterior surface of the cornea, in particular, plays a crucial role in the maximum amount of refraction. Individuals who have perfectly focused light rays on their retina are known as emetropes, and this condition is referred to as emetropia. However, in cases where the light rays fail to focus on the retina, the condition is known as amotropia. Now let's learn more about amotropia. This is a condition that encompasses various types of visual impairments that affect the ability of the eye to properly focus light onto the retina. One such type is myopia, where the rays of light tend to focus in front of the retina leading to difficulty in seeing distant objects clearly. This condition is commonly known as nearsightedness. Hypermetropia, also known as hyperopia, is another type of amotropia where the rays of light focus behind the retina. This results in difficulty in seeing nearby objects clearly, and the individual may experience eye strain or headaches when performing tasks that require near vision. Astigmatism is a type of amotropia where the rays of light have two separate foci, causing distortion or blurring of the image. This occurs when the cornea is irregularly shaped, resulting in different degrees of refraction in different parts of the eye. Next, let's go into more detail about myopia. Myopia, commonly known as nearsightedness, is a visual impairment where individuals have difficulty seeing distant objects clearly. This occurs because the rays of light from faraway objects run parallel and focus in front of the retina, instead of directly on it. The characteristic myopic look is due to the patient's tendency to half-close their eyes to try and improve their focus. Myopia can be caused by various factors, such as increased curvature of the cornea, an increased refractive index of the eye, and larger eyeball size. Axial myopia, resulting from an elongated eyeball, is the most common cause. For every one millimeter of extra length, an increase of three diopters of power is observed. Here are some other types of myopia. Curvature myopia is seen with keratoconus, with each one millimeter of extra curvature, six diopters of power is added, resulting in the increased power of the eye. Index myopia is seen with conditions that increase the refractive indices of the eye, such as a nuclear cataract. Here's how the treatment of myopia works. Concave lenses, also known as divergent or minus lenses, are the primary treatment option for myopia. However, one disadvantage of using a minus lens is that it causes the minification of objects, with every one diopter of power resulting in a 2% reduction in image size. If left uncorrected, myopic patients may develop divergent squint, a condition where the eyes point outward to avoid double vision. This condition can further lead to binocular vision problems and affect the quality of life. Now let's take a deep dive into hypermetropia. Hypermetropia, also known as farsightedness, is a visual impairment where individuals have difficulty seeing nearby objects clearly, as the rays from the object are divergent and focus behind the retina. It is important to note that all newborns are mildly hypermetropic, with a range of 2.5 to 3.0 diopters. The causes associated with hypermetropia include the smaller axial length of the eye, a flatter cornea, and decreased refractive index. 
The most common cause of hypermetropia is a smaller axial length, where every one millimeter of shortening results in an increase of three diopters of hypermetropia. Hypermetropia can cause discomfort and strain on the eyes, leading to symptoms such as headaches and eye fatigue. It's crucial to diagnose and treat hypermetropia at an early stage to prevent further deterioration of vision and associated complications, such as amblyopia or lazy eye. Now let's go over the types of hypermetropia. Curvature hypermetropia is seen in congenital conditions like cornea plana and sclera cornea. Index hypermetropia is seen with cortical cataracts that lead to decreased refractive index. Now let's look at the symptoms. In many cases, patients with hypermetropia remain asymptomatic as their normal accommodation of 16 diopters compensates for the visual impairment and focuses images from long distances on the retina. However, with excessive use of accommodation, patients may experience eye strain, also known as asthenopia. Prolonged use of accommodation can lead to accommodation spasms, causing blurred vision, a condition called pseudomyopia. Patients with hypermetropia may also experience associated symptoms, such as headaches, amblyopia, and frequent styes due to rubbing of the eyes. It's important to note that hypermetropics are also at risk of developing early-onset presbyopia, a condition where the eyes lose their ability to focus on nearby objects due to aging. Now let's look at the treatment. The primary treatment for hypermetropia is the prescription of corrective glasses. Before prescribing the glasses, the patient's accommodation needs to be paralyzed. The glasses prescribed are usually convergent convex plus lenses. It's crucial to correct hypermetropia, as uncorrected hypermetropia can lead to convergent squint, a condition where the eyes are not aligned properly, resulting in double vision and other visual problems. Now let's move on to astigmatism. Astigmatism is a common refractive error that occurs due to a difference in the curvature of the cornea in the center and the periphery of the eye. This causes light rays from the periphery to focus in front of the retina, while light rays from the center focus behind the retina. This difference in foci causes distorted or blurred vision, making it difficult for patients to see clearly. Astigmatism can be classified into different types based on the two meridians, regular and irregular. Regular astigmatism occurs when the two meridians are perpendicular to each other, and it can be further categorized into three types, with the rule, against the rule, and oblique. With the rule astigmatism occurs when the vertical meridian is more curved, while against the rule astigmatism occurs when the horizontal meridian is more curved. Oblique astigmatism occurs when the meridians are not vertical or horizontal. On the other hand, irregular astigmatism occurs when the two meridians are not symmetrical and not perpendicular to each other. Regular astigmatism is corrected using a spherocylindrical lens, and the type of correction depends on the refractive type of astigmatism, such as simple myopic, simple hypermetropic, compound myopic, compound hypermetropic, and mixed astigmatism. Let's take a look at the symptoms. Astigmatism presents with distorted blurred vision, asthenopia, headaches. In high astigmatism, the patient can even show tilting of the head. Now for the treatment. The treatment of astigmatism depends on the type and severity of the condition. Cylindrical glasses are the primary treatment, which corrects astigmatism by compensating for the difference in curvature of the cornea in different meridians. The type of cylindrical glasses prescribed depends on the type of astigmatism. In some cases, surgical procedures like astigmatic laser-assisted in situ keratomileusis, limbal relaxing incisions, 
and the Ruiz procedure can also be used to correct astigmatism. Toric lenses are also used to treat astigmatism. Now let's look at Sturm's conoid. This is a condition where the refractive powers are different in all meridians, resulting in two focal points separated by a focal interval, or circle of least confusion. Treatment of Sturm's conoid depends on the type and severity of the condition, and can include the use of cylindrical glasses or surgical procedures. Now let's talk about presbyopia. Presbyopia is a condition that commonly affects individuals over the age of 50, and it results in a natural decline in the eye's ability to accommodate or adjust to near objects. This is caused by the hardening of the lens, fibrosis in the capsule, and weakening of the ciliary muscles. As a result, people with presbyopia have difficulty seeing nearby objects, and tend to hold them at a distance to get a clearer image in the retina. However, their distance vision is usually unaffected. Here is a table showing the amplitude of accommodation with age. At age 10, the amplitude is 14 diopters. At age 15, the amplitude is 12 diopters. Age 20, it's 10 diopters. At 25, it's 8.5 diopters. Age 30, it's 7 diopters. Age 35, it's 5.5 diopters. Age 40, it's 4.5 diopters. 45, it's 3.5 diopters. 50, it's 2.5 diopters. 55, it's 1.75 diopters. 60, it's 1 diopter. 65, it's 0.25 diopters. And at age 70, the amplitude is zero diopters. Now let's talk about age-expected presbyopia correction. The degree of loss of accommodation, or the amplitude of accommodation, increases with age. These values can be used as a guideline for expected presbyopia correction. Now for the treatment. When it comes to treating presbyopia, there are several options available. One common option is to prescribe bifocal or trifocal glasses, which allow the patient to see both near and far objects with one pair of glasses. Alternatively, patients can choose to wear contact lenses, which come in different designs such as monovision or multifocal. Refractive surgeries such as laser-assisted in situ keratomial usis or photorefractive keratectomy can also be considered to correct presbyopia. Additionally, there are now progressive lenses available that do not have dividing lines like traditional bifocal or trifocal glasses. These lenses gradually change in power from top to bottom, providing a smooth transition between distance, intermediate, and near vision. The last condition we'll cover is anisometropia. Anisometropia is a condition where there is a significant difference in refractive power between both eyes, with a threshold of 2.5 diopters or higher. This condition can lead to several problems, such as eye strain, headaches, and double vision. In some cases, anisometropia can also lead to amblyopia, or lazy eye, which can cause permanent vision loss if left untreated. Thank you for listening to this module about refraction.